So, static cooling water cools the stator, which is the conducting bars for the major current of our 23,000 volts and 730 megawatts. The rotor has to also be cooled. So we do that by filling this entire body with hydrogen. Vessel, let's use vessel instead of body. Fill this entire vessel with hydrogen. So there is something about hydrogen and it's very small nucleus that makes it a very good conductor of heat. Don't know why, I, I don't have a great explanation about it, but that, that is a true statement. It conducts heat very, very well. So by using hydrogen in, inside here instead of air, then we can have, it conducts heat better, so we can have less surface area, so you can have a smaller rotor, and we're talking 10 times smaller. Uh, so it's lighter, so it's more efficient. So, most of us know hydrogen is explosive. It's flammable. Most of us know it's flammable. Most flammable things are also explosive in the right circumstances. So if you have normal air and there is 4% hydrogen, that hydrogen will burn. And then it gets up to 12% hydrogen and that hydrogen will explode. And it gets up to 75% hydrogen, 78, gets up to a very high amount of hydrogen, and there's not enough oxygen for the hydrogen to meet up for the explosion to happen anymore. So if you're 80% uh, if you're hydrogen and the other 20% is air, well, only 20% of that air is oxygen, right? So you're only 4% oxygen, <coughs> it's no longer explosive. So by keeping the hydrogen very pure, and by very pure, we're looking for 99%. And when that thing starts dropping to 98%, everybody starts wondering what the hell's going on. By keeping the hydrogen very pure, we keep this thing safe, even though it's kind of a bomb. All right, so the rotor itself, that's spinning 3,600 RPMs, has little scoops built into the shell that grab the hydrogen and pull it down across the internal windings and then spit it back out. And so these scoops kind of alternate as you go down the, the rotor. So as the hydrogen absorbs the heat off the rotor, then the side that's rejecting it spits it out and it has to, we have to get rid of the heat somewhere, right? So we get rid of the heat with the hydrogen cooler. Man, I don't know how to draw this. So, the hydrogen that gets rejected out gets pushed. Let's go back to pink. It gets pulled into the rotor, it gets pushed out, it gets pulled through. pulled through the cooler, and then back around like that. So through the cooler, and back around. What's making it want to go? Well, part of it is these little scoops, but the majority of it is that there is a big fan blade built into the rotor itself on either end. Oops. said we had an analyzer that was telling us it was pure. So that analyzer is set up on opposite sides of this fan. I guess I need to make those arrows bigger. So it is actually the spinning of the rotor that creates the force that blows the hydrogen across that analyzer, which means that when you're in an outage and you're only going 6 RPM instead of going 3600, you don't have any significant flow and this analyzer no longer means anything. 
It's a stale reading. All right. There is a hydrogen dryer. So the hydrogen dryer pulls hydrogen down, and you got two towers of desiccant. One tower is in service, and the other is uh, regenerating. Each tower has a blower built into it. The desk kit absorbs the, the moisture, and then when the dew point on the outside starts to go uh, up, then it swaps towers. I think it's on a timer. I just said that it looks at the dew I mean, we're measuring the dew point, but I think it's actually on a timer when it swaps. So then the tower that is not in service has to get rid of that moisture. So it's got a heater and it's got a recirculating loop. And then it's got cooling water. And then it's got like a little collecting pot and a drain. So you heat the desiccant to make it give up the moisture, and then you cool it back, cool the hydrogen back off, and the moisture falls back out. And then there's a little drain that detects when there's water there, and it opens up and it dumps the water into, into a funnel on the ground. I have the impression that it's not a lot of water, that uh, it's like an hour cycle, and that we're talking, you know, less than a cup of water gets dumped out of it. Boat down there. I don't remember So this cooler, let's give a zoom in on the cooler. So what you've got is an inlet pipe, and then that goes to a water box, and then that goes to 700 little pipes. And then you have an outlet water box. And you got 700 more little pipes going the opposite direction. And then all of this has that air conditioner type fill, you know, the little aluminum zigzags that just create more surface area for the pipes to be at the, the for the fill to be at the temperature of the pipes so that the hydrogen or gas or whatever is cooling, right? Uh, interacts with it more because surface area is key to heat transfer. And then, let's change the color for this. There's this little soda straw that sits up at the top that's almost touching the top of that water box. And then that goes to a funnel, and that is the hydrogen cooler vent. So after we drained this thing and unbolted it and pulled it out and sent a small Japanese woman with a digital camera to crawl through the generator, and then she's gotten out, and then we put it back in, and we recheck the seals, and we bolt it back up, and now we'll 
maintenance gives it back to us and we've got to fill it. If you just lined up the water, you could trap a bubble up in here that would make it, that would restrict your, the amount of water you could get flowing through it. And this vent lets the bubble get pushed out and down and that makes sure you have adequate flow through your hydrogen cooler. Are there four hydrogen coolers? There are four hydrogen coolers, yes. Each one? Each one. Yeah, he's, we, he takes readings on the tubes beneath. So he's seen four temperature. And if you go up to the top, you can see the four rectangles. Alright. So, before we can pull this cooler out and send a small Japanese woman with a digital camera crawling through it, we have got to get rid of the big dangerous explosive hydrogen bomb we have there. Hydrogen bomb means something different. I apologize to any fusion experts that happen to be watching my video. Alright. So, and colors. I think I'm going orange now. No, that's just a stick man. Alright. So, you have. I'm about to do this backwards. There is a header at the top that has a whole bunch of little nozzles on it. And that guy has a regulator and a bypass around a regulator. And then that goes to a hydrogen trailer. So, normal operation, we're maintaining 75 pounds every day, day and a half. It drops down to uh, 72 pounds, and he gets an alarm, and he says, fill it back up. And then you guys fill it to 76 pounds. And you manually open the valves at the regulator and at the truck, and line up one tube of hydrogen, and then that goes to this top header and pure hydrogen is on the top and pushes down and it fills up and it brings back up to 76 pounds and you guys stop. That is the normal deal. So if, if we're going to vent this thing off, there is a different header at the bottom that goes out the roof. And you got to do something. If we're doing this, we have to be able to measure the purity of the hydrogen so that we know what we got. And since the rotor's not turning, then the normal lineup isn't any good. So you got to do some valve manipulation to take this return header and send it to the analyzer and then send that to the vent. So you got flow through the analyzer. Whole time you're in. So you do that, and the hydrogen is going out this bottom and out the roof, and pressure goes down from your 75 pounds until you get down to about 10 pounds. And then we're going to maintain that 10 pounds. Jackie, you're letting me screw up, aren't you? Oh, I thought that was. Hydrogen is lighter than CO2, so we are we are venting. We are venting off the hydrogen line. So the same the line we normally fill with is being lined up to the roof for the vent, and is being lined up to the analyzer, and then the 
the discharge side of the analyzer is going to the roof as well. All right. So once we get down to 10 pounds, then we've got a CO2 tank, and we line this carbon dioxide up to that bottom header. And we're slowly filling from the bottom to the top with CO2. And because CO2 is way heavier than hydrogen, then it's going to make a, a layer at the bottom, and it's going to gradually push up and push the hydrogen out. And then eventually your analyzer will, with a quick reading, 99% purity, and it'll start, it'll start dropping and dropping. And at a certain point, it goes out of range, and you got to swap its reading from hydrogen and air to hydrogen or to CO2 in air, hydrogen and CO2. Stuff we don't do often. If you're going to do this, don't watch this video. Get the procedure. Watch this video first, then get the procedure. So eventually, this top header has pure CO2 pushing out through the analyzer. An alpha vent, and at that point we go okay. We're we got to change the lineup around a lot because we don't want because you can't breathe CO2 either, right? CO2 is not explosive. We dealt with the explosive issue, but we have not dealt with the asphyxiation issue that would happen to our poor Japanese lady when we sent her down. She came on site five times. I'm sorry, I keep breaking her up. I thought it was funny because I looked down that thing and said, I don't know. I don't know this is smart sending somebody down there. And then I saw who they were sending down. I was like, okay, I'll buy it. All right, I think she's, she's specially qualified. All right. So then we change our lineup. We were adding CO2 on the bottom. We were venting hydrogen out the top. Now the whole thing's full of CO2. And we are going to vent CO2 out the bottom. So we line that bottom up to the vent. And then, yeah, then we fill it with air. What color is air? What color haven't I used? I guess we're <laughs> clear. So compressed air goes into the fill line, goes into the top, and pushes the CO2 out the bottom. And so the bottom is lined up to the analyzer and then to the vent and then on out the roof. And you got to tweak your valves, try and maintain your pressure. You got a valve on the vent and a valve on the fill. You tweak both of them to try and maintain your 10 pounds, maintain your flow on your analyzer. And then eventually you'll quit reading pure CO2 and start reading air. And then you vent for another four hours. And then you go, okay, she's safe. We, we, can, we can now open this thing up with no worries about explosions. And then when we, later we're going to want to put CO2 back in it before we we're going to put air back into it. Hydrogen. CO2. Thank you, Terry. We're going to want to put hydrogen back in it. But before we can put hydrogen back in it, we've got to put CO2 back in it to make sure the hydrogen doesn't mix with air. And at some point, be between 4 and 75% concentration in the presence of heat and blow up and ruin our jobs and we all have to find work somewhere else. If we not on site when it blows. This was not my best work, but it wasn't embarrassingly bad. <laughs> <laughs>